Hi, good morning and welcome back. Uh, this is a day two of International Women in Business Summit. So excited to have so many of you here today, blogging in live um, or those who are watching on a replay. So today we have uh, Tara here. Tara is joining from New York City. It's really early in New York City and I'm really excited um, about Tara's session today. So today we're going to be talking about um, how to tell your story and connect and create a raving fans. So Tara is an image consultant from uh, New York City and she'll be telling us all about it. Uh, for some reason we lost Tara's video. Um, Tara, can you hear us? I can and I can still see you. Okay, I can't see you. I'm not sure whether you need to just toggle with your video. It seems like we can't see you. Okay, let's give it a try. Sorry about that. There we are. Okay. I can't see you. You Maybe can't? Power? Could any of you comment and let us know whether you can see Tara on the screen? You can see. Oh, okay, Bob. good. Perfect. Okay, Tara, well, I can't see you for some reason. <laughs> um, Not at the moment. Okay. What can we do? I will... I can see both. Okay, Tara, can you just join back in? Okay, I don't, I don't I'm not seem to be able to see you. My apologies. Ladies, can you see Tara again? Just let us know. If not, we just if you can see her, then that's perfect. Okay, fantastic. I can just see the icon. I can only just see icon as well. Tara, could just quickly double check your settings. Um, yeah. At the top, and just uh, click on the video icon and just see whether you are video settings are set up correctly. <clears throat> Before we join live, I could see Tara fine, but it seems to be some kind of technical difficulties. Apologies about that. Yay, we can see you Is now. That better? Okay, I just reset everything. <laughs> well, so let's start again. Uh, Tara, really <laughs> welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here. I know you have woken up really early to be here and it's such a pleasure to have you. So would you just give us a quick introduction of what you do and get started? Sure. I am the founder of The Potentialista, which is a public image consultancy here in New York City, helping entrepreneurs develop their reputation and get featured in the media. Amazing. So tell us how long you've been doing this, how long you've been running your own business. I have had a business for the last four years. It's kind of evolved over time. I think anyone who's been in business for a little bit of time has realized that a lot of times you start with one idea and then you end up pivoting to something else. So originally, I started out doing makeup tutorials on YouTube. And so it's evolved quite a bit. But I think overall, this mm -hmm. entire time, I've been helping people build their confidence. And that's at the core of the most important thing to me and the most rewarding thing so that's amazing i know you have other roles you also write for huffington post i do global and i'm the copy editor for tedx lincoln square here in new york city amazing you have a lot of roles <laughs> <laughs> you keep yourself busy i do it's all good stuff though yeah, so tell us a little bit more about how you work with your clients and um, just really what is a self-image um, and how we can tell our stories better to, to the audience that we want to connect with. Sure. I think the thing that people come to me most often with is that they don't know if they're ready for PR because they're not really sure what their story is. They're not really sure how they want to show up in the world because they get kind of in their heads. And I, I know we've probably all been there. I've definitely been there with being a perfectionist or a high achiever and feeling like 
it's not quite perfect yet. I don't know if my story is exciting enough or important enough or I have the message clear enough. And so a lot of times, especially if you're doing lots of different things like I am, it can be hard to pick talk about because you're so excited about all of it. You want to talk about everything. And so I really help people nail down their story and figure out what to talk about when they are on Facebook Live, podcast interviews, TV interviews, if they're being interviewed for a digital publication, and just have this cohesive brand where when you show up, people know you for something, and it's something that you chose that you want to talk about over and over again. And we talk about different ways to tell that story so that it doesn't sound like you're just repeating yourself every time someone talks to you. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Um, so how do you go about crafting that story? I mean, we all have, um, we could talk about many things, whether it's our background or is it the key message that we're trying to carve? How do you go about really figuring out what is the important part, um, what we want to tell to the big audience? And Tara, I think we lost your video for the moment as well. <laughs> I can still see you. Do you want me um, to reset? If you could just try again with your video. Um, I think I had that issue with my microphone yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> muting me. <laughs> my microphone just said no more. <laughs> so if you could just see whether you can um, just reconnect with your video. There we are. Okay. Um, yeah. So crafting a story. I think when people listen to your story. So part of my story that I didn't mention is that I'm a nurse and I've worked with people who have been in car accidents and unexpected tragedies have come up and talked and heard a lot of stories and helped people through grieving and and things like that. And some people will come to me and say, how do you go from nursing to PR? That doesn't make and I think it's really about being able to listen to people's stories and find out the pieces that are important to them. And your audience is going to do the same thing with you. They're going to insert themselves in your story when you're telling it. So it's important to have key points that will resonate with them. You don't want it to be too abstract where it doesn't relate to anybody. And you don't want it to sound too vanilla where it sounds like it could be anybody so really understanding your audience and who's listening and who you want to have listening on the other end and then speaking directly to that person like yeah. you're having coffee with them so the beginning part of the story usually should start out with something that makes people feel maybe sad or some sort of negative emotion. That sounds kind of bad, but... Um, it sounds too. It's <laughs> isn't it? It does. But when you start with something vulnerable and something relatable and something unexpected, people actually pay attention longer. Because what happens, and my background in psychology and nursing, um, kind of, there's a theory behind this, but what happens is that people, when they expect a certain outcome, they kind of tune out. So if you're watching a movie and you think at the end they're going to live happily ever after and then the movie starts kind of going that direction, you kind of lose interest and get a little bit bored and you don't really feel like you need to see what happens at the end. And that's all part of our programming in our brain to teach us to do that because we're getting so much input all the time from different things like seeing different things, hearing different noises, and so our brain has to process what's important. So once you figure out what's already important or what you already think happen, you kind of tune out and start focusing on other things. So there's a really great quote by Maya Angelou, and she says, people won't remember what you say, but they'll remember how you made them feel. And so from a storytelling perspective, I think it's really important to focus on how you want your audience to feel when they're listening to you. So when yeah. you start with something positive and you're like, 
I'm doing great. I live in New York City. My life is perfect. Nothing bad ever happens. Then <laughs> people are like, oh, I don't need to listen to her because that's that doesn't seem real. Or I can look on social media and scroll through and see the highlight reel of everyone else's life and and I don't really need to listen to the rest of this story. But if I start out and I say, I moved to New York City because I was getting out of a really difficult relationship and I was actually running away from a life that I didn't really love, then people can relate to that and think about a time in their lives that they weren't super happy with their job or their relationship or it was difficult to make friends and kind of put themselves in your shoes. And that's when you get people to come along and listen to the rest of your story because they want to happens. And they know yeah. what's happened to them. But a lot of times these difficult, vulnerable stories are things that we share with close girlfriends behind closed doors, not necessarily broadcast on Facebook or on TV. And yeah. so when you share something like that, it's a bit unexpected. And people are like, wow, who is this person that feels comfortable talking about these things in front of everybody? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Tara, we lost your video again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm, technical difficulty. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'd love to hear more about your story, and I think the listeners would also too, because you really have a phenomenal story. Um, you touched upon it from um, sort of moving to New York City and leaving your, your life behind. Um, life that you weren't um, excited about and it wasn't giving you fulfillment and you just sort of decided to up and leave. How did that all come about? I'd really love to hear more about that. Um, you know, setting up as a, a sole female in New York City is not a <laughs> thing to do and it's such a brave move. Right. It was not an easy thing to do. It was a pretty difficult decision, but once I decided to do it, I was like unstoppable. Um, so I was living somewhere else before and I had moved there for a relationship that I was in and I didn't really have a lot of friends when I moved there and I took a new job and I, I changed a lot of things in my life all at once. And so after doing that and deciding that that wasn't really what I wanted to be doing, I ended up calling my dad <laughs> and I, I was talking to him and I just said, I'm, I'm about to make a big change and I don't know what to do. Yeah. I know I need to move somewhere else and start doing things that I want to do, but I was scared. It was I was 30 years old and I thought this is the first time in my life that I've ever done something that was just for me and it felt really selfish and it felt really scary and so I'm talking to my dad and and he says, "Well, you've lived all over the world. If you could live anywhere, where would you go?" Yeah. And and I'm thinking, why are you asking me that question at a time like this? Like I'm trying to figure out my life and my job and and what I'm going to do with all my stuff and how I'm going to move. And I said, well, I'd probably go to New York City, London, or Rome. Those were my top three choices. And he said, well, why don't you go to one of those places? And I was like, oh, I'm allowed to just do that? Like, I could just decide I'm going to go there and just go? <laughs> yeah. And we talked a little bit more um, about the situation, and and his advice to me was actually really good, but it brought up some times from my childhood where I was not such a cooperative daughter. <laughs> and when I was in high school, my dad had said, you know, you need to be a lawyer or a doctor, and those those are really great careers, and I think you should do it. And so initially, I had gone to college to become a doctor. I was pre-med. And did I lose the video again? Are you, you're looking around like... I know. I have lost you, but I don't you know. Did. Somebody is saying, yeah, we lost you again. Okay. This, I'm okay. so sorry, ladies, for a um, um, little glitch. Yeah, 
uh, San can see you. I can't see you. It's like I'm talking to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we were talking, and one year into college, I had called my dad and I said, I'm not going to go to medical school. I'm going to be a nurse. And he was a little bit disappointed. And he was like, how did this, you know, decision come up? And I don't think it's a really good idea. You've already done a year of coursework towards medical school. And, and I said, that's, that's okay. I'm just going to figure it out and do it. And so I did. And on this call with him about where I should move to, he reminded me of that. He said, you know, back then I, I tried to tell you what to do and it didn't work. So I'm not, I, I don't think you're the kind of person that lets people tell her what to do. Yeah. And so you should do whatever you want because that's what you're going to do anyway. <laughs> and so I ended up getting a temporary job in New York City as a traveling nurse. And I was only supposed to be here for three months. And try it and then I'll go back to maybe I'll become a doctor or something and spent three months here and fell in love. And the rest is kind of history. I, I fall in love with the man or the city? The city. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd better clarify that because I, I have a feeling it's the city that you fell in love with. It is the city. And, and I just figured out again how to make it work. I had plans to move and start school. I had gotten accepted into a master's program here um, in Washington, DC. And 30 days before that program was starting, I actually met someone in New York and who pulled some information out of me, got me to tell him a lot of my story. And then he said, what you really want to do is not go back to school. And at first I thought he was crazy. I was like, you don't really know me. And I just met you and you're telling me that I should change my whole plan. <laughs> then I walked away from the conversation and I was like, you know what? I think he's right. I think I need to change my entire plan and, and stay here and figure it out. And again, it was, kind of rushed. It was kind of last minute. I had already planned on moving and I had to undo all of those plans to be able to stay. And it was the best decision ever. So here I am. <laughs> amazing. So three years in, there you are in New York City. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Um, we can't see you again, Tara. Okay. I don't know what's going on because I can see. Can you see yourself? Ew, so it doesn't tell me when it goes off. Oh, but can you see yourself when it goes off? Yeah, I can. Oops, sorry. Seems to be a very busy day around here today. <laughs> well, Mercury retrograde is coming, so I think that could be <laughs> maybe. Were you maybe. snowed in yesterday in New York as well? It was snowy, but it wasn't as bad as they predicted, I don't think. Yeah. Amazing. So we can see you now again. Okay. I'm really sorry, ladies. I think it's just um, just technical glitch, to be honest. And hopefully we'll just continue checking up on uh, what the ladies can see or not. But uh, let's try and continue. I mean, it's such a fascinating story. I love hearing your story and how, you know, you were into nursing and now you completely change your life around completely um new city new career new job um and it's a drastic change um what would you give in terms of advice to other ladies that maybe need to take that scary leap in a career or life from your experience what would you say your your lessons were um while you were doing it i think it is really scary and to recognize that you're scared and to explore all of the options. So when I decided to make that decision, I looked at what could happen. And I'm seeing comments in the chat that I've just explored again. I know, I can see you. That's really strange. <laughs> 
Um, yes. Shall we try and reload you? Um, do you think that would, would work better? So what I'll do, I'll, I'll take you off and then we can reload you again. Okay. Ladies, can you see her or it says they all saying that they lost you. you. They can't see. Okay. So what I'll do, we'll just reload you. I'll invite you back again. Okay. Oh, such a shame. <laughs> I'm so sorry, ladies. We're going to invite Tara back again and just see whether her camera will work again. There we are. We're back again. Fingers crossed that this time it works. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad they can still hear me because worst case scenario, I can just keep talking and okay, and then and then maybe they won't be able to see me, but at least they can hear me. So, if you're thinking about making a big change and reinventing your life and changing everything about it, I really had to come up with a plan kind of quickly. And so I wrote out everything that I wanted and and then just started doing it. And I kind of assessed the risk along the way. Like, is this dangerous? Is it going to hurt anybody? Is it um, going to hurt me? Is it a bad idea because of that? And really, I had to distinguish between being afraid of doing something new that I had never done before and being afraid of something that's dangerous or not healthy. And so what I realized was that everything I wanted to do was not actually dangerous, but it was triggering that part of me that felt like I should be afraid of it and kind of pulling back those pieces to separate them. Like this is not dangerous and I'm just getting uncomfortable out of my comfort zone. And that's okay because something good is going to happen because of this, because I'm taking that step and doing something uncomfortable that I really want to do. And I think that was the key. I had to really want to move to New York because it wasn't easy. It wasn't going to be like a piece of cake. I only knew two people here on Facebook when I moved. I didn't really have a lot of friends. So here I am leaving a city where I didn't know anybody when I moved there to a city where I only knew two people. So that didn't really make sense, but I had to figure it out when I got here. Yeah. And I think um, another piece of that is really thinking about what it is that you want and, and letting yourself be a little bit selfish it it's not actually selfish but it feels selfish in the moment and I had to write down everything I wanted in order to get it out of my system I started making a bucket list where I was like these are all of the things I've been putting off that I've been saying I should do that I've been saying one day I will do this all the places I want to travel to I wanted to learn a language. I wanted to you know, go to the top of the Empire State Building. And I wrote down all of those things. And at first, it was difficult. I got a couple of things on the list. And I'm like, wow, this feels like a lot. And once I started going, eventually, I had six pages of things I wanted to do. And, and then I just started crossing them off the list. Um. Yeah, we lost your sound now. So, oh, yeah, we lost your sound. We just lost your video for a second. Oh, the sound um, is gone. Uh, we can hear. I can. Yeah, it's back. Oh, on. it's back. Okay. Okay. We'll just let's the video again. Sh should we just go on with sound? Um, let's see if it comes back. Yeah, it comes back on. Um, but yeah, um, I think it, it's just going to carry on happening. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do that. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Amazing. So bucket list. Um, you said it was a huge bucket list. How long did you give yourself to sort of go through all those things? Or are you still working on it? Or is it ever expanding? Well, I was only supposed to be in New York for three months. So I gave myself three months to go through all the things. And I just started doing all of them. And 
people, friends of mine started reaching out and asking me, what are you doing differently? I've noticed something is different about you. And maybe I should move to New York. Maybe it's New York City. <laughs> and I was like, no, it's not really that. It's just that I, I started doing things that I really enjoy doing. And they started asking me, will you teach me how to do that? And that's how I started getting into coaching and business and exploring how to help people really become the person that they want to be and develop their personal brand. And, and what people don't realize, and I didn't realize, was that we all have a personal brand already. And it's just about gaining that self-awareness and that self-insight into what that is. And if you don't like it, how to change it. And yeah. so your brand kind of follows your story as you evolve over time. Mm. How important do you think in, in this day and age to have a personal brand um, and, and really be able to tell your story? I think it's really important, especially if you're going to be the face of your business, if you're an author, if you want to do a TED Talk, or if you're doing Facebook Lives and being really visible in your business, I think it's super important for you to be able to also talk about your talent, to connect with the people who are the right people to work with you. And yeah. I think that it's important to also see how people already see you. And the way that I have my clients do that and the way that you can do it as well is just to ask other people who know you what, what are the first three to five things that come to mind when you think of me and do it with a lot of different groups of people. So people you've just met, people you've known for a really long time, friends, family members, acquaintances and ask people what they think. And I, I do this all the time because your personal brand is always evolving. And so even two weeks ago, I met someone for the first time and they asked me, what do you do? And I said, well, what, what do you think I do? And just kind of having fun with it. And they said, well, I think that you are probably on TV or a journalist, which is very wow. different from people seeing me as a nurse, which is what I was doing I, two years ago. I was when I moved to New York. And so it's it, just... It up, isn't it, in your image, um, with your new role, with your new life? It right. It's complete reinvention. <laughs> yes. And so really checking in with other people to see how they're seeing you. And I think this... To me, this used to be kind of a negative thing to wonder what other people were thinking because when I was younger, I don't know if your parents ever did this to you, but I used to, you know, back to school shopping and you'd get new clothes or new shoes and you'd go off to school and come home. And one of the first things that my mom would ask me when I came home after something like that happened, and it wasn't a big deal, it was like the first day of school, but she would say, what did everyone think of your new shoes or your new haircut or something like that? And it seems really harmless, like, was everyone excited? But looking back, I think that really shaped the way that I placed value on what other people thought. And that's probably why it took me so long to really make that decision to start doing things for myself and things that would make me happy because I was constantly worried about what other people were thinking before that and trying to guess what it was. And so it's actually really liberating to be able to go around and ask people, what do you, how do you see me? Or what are the top three to five things that you see or think of when you think of my name? Just to get in touch with that because it could also be your greatest asset to know what other people think of what you're doing, especially in business. So that you can make sure that you're honing in on that brand that you want to be portraying and you can change the bits and pieces of it that you don't necessarily want. So I've also gone from makeup tutorials to now publicity and I've had to 
change my personal brand through that transformation as well. And, and so people don't think of me as the makeup girl anymore. <laughs> and now they're, my friends actually call me the PR fairy. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, every time I look at your images online, um, or just your social media presence, it, it's always so vibrant, so lively, happy. Um, you're always smiling and just so vibrant. How do you manage to achieve that? Um, especially in the city that's sometimes so cold and <laughs> you don't want to do it, but kind of cuddle up. <laughs> I actually, I think having that list of things that you want to do and really doing the things that light you up in your spare time and making sure that you have spare time to do things is, is one of the most important things you can do for yourself to keep showing up in your business vibrantly and what you're doing because it's it's not all about work and I used to be a workaholic I used to work all the time I still work quite a bit but I carve out time each week to do something that I really enjoy doing that's not related to work or to hang out with friends and not talk about work because now a lot of my friends also run businesses so we get excited and we start talking about what we're working on but I think it's also important to take a step back and have a break from work and also to have a morning routine where you are waking up every morning and setting that intention to have the best day ever and to be better than you were yesterday no matter what happened yesterday yeah so start every day fresh with a new mindset with a um, with a new intention, isn't it? Yes. Amazing. We have a question. Um, so Christina says, I do the same with my kids sometimes and I should probably stop. <laughs> <laughs> I think another way you could frame that question with your kids, Christina, is to ask them what they think. What do you think of your new haircut? Or another thing that's really hard for people to talk about is what they're really good at. And so what we do instead in our language, and a lot of my strategy is communication um, with mm -hmm. my business, but I've noticed that people will say, I really like doing X, Y, and Z, instead of I'm really good at those things. Yeah. And so it is hard for us to say though to say that we're good at it or to say that we feel very confident or that our haircut looks awesome. And so to really get in the practice of doing that and role modeling that for your kids and also asking them and encouraging them to speak about themselves in that way is going to be really valuable for them in the future. I think a lot of us struggle in terms of selling ourselves or selling our story. Um, and here in the UK, I think we're more conservative about shouting from the rooftops of <laughs> how good we are at something. <laughs> how do you do it in a more authentic way and, um, you know, not coming across to salesy? So just tell us a little bit more about that. I think if, if you feel like it's salesy or you feel like, it's really uncomfortable, then it, that comes across in your messaging. And so instead of thinking of it as selling, think of it as inviting. You're inviting people into your business, into what you're doing, and, and offering to help them. And I think that's where we get into our own way a lot, is that we think that we assume how other people are going to perceive us because we have this idea in our own mind. So we kind of project that onto the person standing in front of us and think, oh my gosh, they're gonna think I'm salesy and greedy and full of myself and conceited. And then when you think like that, your conversation moves that way so that you're right. It's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so you get really uncomfortable and you say sorry a lot or you say, I don't want to bother you, but I I want to tell you about this thing or 
or maybe you just blurt out everything because you're super nervous and then you're like I'm actually I have this business and I do this thing and I could really help you sell your book and get featured in the media and do all this stuff and doesn't that sound great and they're so overwhelmed by all the information that they don't really respond the way that you'd hope they respond and so in those situations where you're a little bit nervous about self-promotion I think it's important to diffuse those thoughts in your head that you project onto them by asking them questions and mm -hmm. really getting to know what they need and what they want and what's a priority for them so that you can have the conversation in a way that's meaningful to them rather than making it meaningful to you. Yeah. Uh, we have a, another question from Christina uh, in the Q and A session a section. So, uh, Christina says, Tara, can you give us some guidelines on how to make our story an important pieces of the brand? How do we identify the important parts of our brand? Sure. I think the first part is to get really clear on who you are and what three things. I would choose three things that make you stand out. And so maybe it's a chronic illness that you've overcome. Maybe it's being a single mom and then starting a business. Maybe it's your career change and you reinvented your life. Or maybe your business is an extension of your career and you've just been doing it for a really long time. I think figuring out how you got to where you are right now is really important and identifying those key moments those three, just choose three because I'm sure there's more than that, but choose three key moments in your story where you changed directions or you did something differently and it worked out really well, but you were scared. And yeah. write those three things down and that's the beginning of your story. And those are the three things that you should talk about so that people start to recognize you for that. And and those things like chronic illness or your career or a relationship that ends or um, changing, changing your career path are things that are relatable to a lot of people, which is another important part of your story. You want people to not be too intimidated by you because you've mm -hmm. just told them all of these things that they can't really relate to. And a lot of times in coaching or in businesses where you want to help people transform their life, you, <laughs> I just let Trisha pop in. Hi, Trisha. Um, Hi, Trisha. A lot of times when you're in those industries like personal development, it's really important for you to show people the before and after. So before yep. you change your career or before you start crowdfunding to start your business or before you get publicity. This is what your life looks like and that's what my life looked like. And then after you do that thing, get crowdfunding, get publicity, publish your book, then this is what your life looks like afterwards. And then putting yourself in that story and saying, this is what I did before. This is how I changed at that key moment, and this is what it looks like after. And helping inspire people to think that that picture of what it looks like after is possible for them too. Yeah, so empowering them with the possibility and sharing your story of what worked for you and um, the possibility of the transformations for, for them using the same techniques. Right. Exactly. And also with storytelling online, you a lot of the things that you do that you are going to be educational for your ideal audience. And so when you're educating them on things, it's important not to give a ton of information, but to break it up with stories because stories actually get people's attention back onto you. So it if you break up a lot of information with stories, it kind of wakes people back up and they're like, oh, it, they're, they're excited about it. They're engaged in it. They want to know what happens next. But if you're listing out bullet points, like personal branding means that people know, like, and trust you, and then you go into what knowing is, 
and you break it up with a story and you break up trust and like, and you have those stories mixed into your video or your Facebook live, then it actually helps bring people's attention back to what you're talking about instead of getting overwhelmed by information. Yeah. I think it's, it, it comes back to the feeling, isn't it? That you can create with storytelling uh, the emotion that you can inspire. And as you said, people just love stories and they connect much better with, with you through storytelling. It's so true. And it is about connecting with you and trusting you so that they want to work with you and they believe that you can solve their problem or that you can help them with what they're trying to accomplish. Yeah. So Trisha saying, um, Tara is one of the best storytellers. This is her unique way of branding that makes her and her clients stand out. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Trisha. I see your question too. Can you explain how your story is your version of branding? Yes. So when you're telling your story, I went into this a little bit before you hopped off, Trisha, but I'll just recap and expand on that a little bit. But when you're telling your story, you're telling people what you want to be known for without actually listing it out. And so I want people to know that I used to be a nurse and now I work in publicity and I moved to New York City and didn't know anybody and made a whole bunch of friends after I got here, but it was really scary and I didn't think that was going to happen. And, yeah. and I was running away from my old life. I wasn't actually running to success. It wasn't like an overnight thing. It didn't come really easily or fall into my lap, but I was actually leaving something that was scary or uncomfortable, but it was more comfortable than the unknown. And so taking people through those things, those are the things that I want people to think of when they think of me. And so putting those things into your story actually helps craft your brand so that people remember you for those things. So it's easy to create this word of mouth brand, even though those people haven't worked with you, but they've heard your podcast interview or they've seen your stuff on social media. And it's easy for them to say, oh, you should follow Tara. She's the nurse who is now doing PR in New York City or or something about New York City because that's a really big part of my brand too. And so I actually even have people reach out to me and ask me for the best restaurants in New York City <laughs> because I've made that such a prominent part of who I am. Okay. And, yeah. and so it's really about what you're putting out there and things that people can talk about as well and spread the word about your business and what you're, what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Um, ladies, if you have any questions for Tara, anything specific that you want to ask, please go ahead and ask. We have another 10 minutes or so um, before we jump on to the next session. So this is your time to ask any questions for Tara. Um, maybe Tara, could you toggle with your video? Maybe we could bring yeah. it back up on the screen. I was just yeah. going to ask if you wanted to do that. Uh, that would be amazing. <laughs> we love hearing, but we'd love to see you as well. <laughs> um, yay, fantastic. Okay, hopefully I can stay on for the last 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, I think it's important when you're writing your story out for there to be a beginning, a middle, and an end. And in the middle needs to be that transformation between the before and the after. And the before, you should really get vulnerable and talk about your, your feelings when you were about to go through that transformation. What was coming up for you? What was scary for you? And a lot of the most common fears that can help you decide what to share. I see your, your question, Kate. The most common fears are the fear of failure, the fear of success the fear of not being good enough or being judged by other people. And if you choose a story that falls into one of those four categories, chances are it's going to resonate with quite a few people who are listening and who are watching. And they're going to think 
I've had that fear before too. And I think a lot of us have had some of those fears, if not all of them at some point in our lives. And so just figuring out a time in your life when one of those things came up for you, how you overcame it and what you're doing now. Um, a lot of people are afraid to share themselves. Trisha, thank you for asking that question. And when people come to me, they're usually really afraid. And they're, the fear is of being vulnerable and really being seen and not having that control over who's watching or who's seeing you and not really knowing who's on the other side of the camera or the Facebook Live or the podcast that's going to hear what you're saying. And it really comes down to what is everyone going to think if I stand up here and I say, I was running away from my life that totally sucked and I put myself in that situation and how could I have done that because then I'm not perfect. Then I messed up and I failed at something and I didn't do it right. And, and how is that going to be perceived by people? Will they take me less seriously in my business? Will they think that I'm not good enough to help them? And that's where really going through that transformation and telling them what happens you do the scary thing, that's where you gain your credibility and your authority and what you have to say is when you break it down and you tell them, these are the exact steps that I took and this is how I did it and you could do it too. And making it really easy for someone to follow that. Yeah. So I think to answer your question is I talk to them about those steps in their story and I get them to tell me, well, what happened next and what happened after that? And then what did you do? And a lot of times we don't think like that where we think, okay, I'm just going to do this five step thing and work through my life. And so by me asking them those questions and pulling it out of them, then I can outline it and say, okay, so this is your story. You started out here and then this bad thing happened or this difficult thing happened. And then you ended up over here. And these are the five steps that someone can take to do it too. Amazing. Thank you so much. It's been an incredible session. We've got Thank a few you. <laughs> We've got a question from Kate. Um, how do you decide what to share and what not to share about yourself? I think share what is important to you. What... What do you want to inspire people to do or what part of your story was most significant in your transformation or in your decision to start doing whatever it is that you're doing? And when it comes to what not to share, there's that saying that all publicity is good publicity. And at the same time, I think that you can't always control what people are going to say about you. And, yeah. and so you might share something and then think, oh, I really wish I wouldn't have shared that. And, and a lot of times this happens earlier on when you're first starting to put yourself out there. You aren't sure what to share. You maybe share something and, and later you're like, oh, I kind of regret sharing that. But it was to a really small audience. It's, it's probably going to be okay. And that might come up again later some might have watched it or heard it and might up and that might trigger you you might feel like this pit in your stomach like how do I respond to that or how do I um, answer this person who's asking me about something that I really wish I hadn't shared that I was hoping nobody saw and yeah. the best way you can respond in those situations if you accidentally share something because we're all going to do it or we have done it where you share something that you're like, oh, I really wish I wouldn't have said that, is just <laughs> if someone confronts you about it, just be like, oh, yeah, that happened. I totally did that. And just own it because it happened. And, and really, if they're bringing it up and they're trying to make you feel uncomfortable, then they really want you to feel uncomfortable and they're not probably on your team or cheering you on. And if you laugh it off and just say, oh, yeah, I did that, it's not a big deal, then yeah. it kind of diffuses the situation and they, they can't really say anything else after that. What they're hoping for is that you'll get embarrassed and blush and uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I think just 
showing up confidently and being like, yeah, that thing happened. And that's part of my life and my story. And I told it and <clears throat> that's it. <laughs> always be embarrassed of your story and we all have different things that happen to us in our lives, sometimes beyond our control. And, uh, you know, like you say, just own it and keep your head held high um, and, and accept it, you know, different things happen to different people and there's something Trisha said yesterday that really resonated with me personally that said whatever is the scariest thing um, for you to share share that um, and for me personally was one of my first failures in business that I was totally afraid for a few years after it happened to share it um, because I felt it was an embarrassing thing but it's the best thing ever after I have um, sort of accepted and allowed myself to share with a bigger audience. That felt incredible. And the connection that he made with the audience when I told that story was so powerful because I've uh, taken it, I accepted it, and it was so scary, but it was the best thing ever. <laughs> I agree. And being able to connect those dots and look back real quick before we finish is I have all of my clients keep an evidence file or something on their computer in Google Drive or Evernote and write down every time something like that happens where they surprise themselves because they were really scared to share something and then it ended up being the best thing ever and kind of connect the dots back through those moments where your life changed for the better and it was unexpected or, or really exciting. As many times we, we learn from things that didn't go right in our life, we learn the most out from it. Um, if everything always went perfectly well, we wouldn't never learn the lessons that we're meant to learn along the way, isn't it? It's so true. Do we have time for one more question? I see one coming from Hannah. Yes, I did. Could you toggle with your video again? Hopefully we'll see yeah. you for the last <laughs> yeah. Uh, which question would you like to answer? Uh, we have one from Christina. Uh, Christina says, I feel like if I mention all the pains of a job and praise, um, embracing my business, I would repel them 90% have jobs. Doesn't it make sense? Uh, oh, I feel like I feel like if I mention all the pains of a job and praise embracing your business, I would repel them as 90% have jobs in, in her audience. Does it make sense? Um, how would you answer that? So can you, can you share what it, what your business is so that I can give you some more detailed advice about that? Okay. And Hannah says, I think we resonate with our own age group successfully. How would you deal with an older over 65 audience? Over 65. Well, I think that over 65 people are going through transformations as well. So if you are generalizing your story and you're talking about going through a transformation, one of the big ones with over 65 is going from having a career to retiring. And so having all that free time or having to find hobbies and things like that. And I know for me, after college, I went through that transformation as well, where in my free time I was studying and then I graduated from school and I had free time to have hobbies that I didn't really have in college. And I had to go out and start finding things doing. And, and so a story like that could definitely resonate with someone over the age of 65. Or if you're talking about career and you're talking about climbing the, to the top of your career path and getting to the top and then realizing that all the things that you thought were waiting for you there are not there and your definition of success has changed, that could probably resonate with someone who's a little bit older or over the age of 65 as well, where they spent their whole life building this career and then they found at the end, it wasn't quite what they expected. Yeah. And then for the wellness industry, trying to think about 
how to talk about it without um, without repelling people who have careers. I think your angle for that would be all about balance because people don't necessarily have to leave their career in order to participate in wellness or to need a health coach or to live a healthier lifestyle. And so just to talk about how you maybe were in a career before and you felt exhausted and drained by it because you didn't have time to take care of yourself. And then once you started doing that, you realized that there was a solution here that could help 90% of people. And by doing that, by going into the wellness industry and leaving your career, you can help other people achieve that balance that you had to find on your own through realizing that that was what you're meant to be doing. Yeah. So it's, it's making that transformation, isn't it? Um, sure. Along the way, which is most powerful. What was the transformation that you experienced along the way and um, got to where you are now? Um, right. Amazing. Tara, thank you so much. We have to wrap up. Uh, okay. If you have any link where ladies might be able to get in touch with you or follow your website, follow your social media, please do share in the chat box. Um, I think many ladies would love to follow, follow your journey and uh, check out your website as well. Yes. yes, I would love to. I'm also going to put my email address in the chat box and I have an ebook on my website that I'm going to send it to everybody who is a part of the summit for free. So if you want to just shoot me an email, I will send it to you. It's all about finding your focus and really understanding what you want and how to write that out, how to create your story and focus on those key things that are going to make you stand out. So you can just send it. Amazing. Put the email in. We can do. We could um, email everyone. Um, maybe tomorrow so after all the sessions wrapped up any sort of freebies or anything that um, the speakers have offered we more than welcome to um, just email it out to everyone but okay. here is Tara's email and Tara's website if you want to check it out and follow her or get in touch with her directly awesome thank you so much for having me Thank you, Tara. I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you for starting your day so early with us. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure and honor to have you here today. Um, yeah, couldn't say thank you enough. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, everyone, for staying through all the video issues and for listening. <laughs> well, let's, let's hope we're going to have uh, less <laughs> technical difficulties moving on. So next up, we'll have just stay on this browser. Uh, next up, we will have Kezia Luckett. So she is um, she's an author and she has an amazing story to share with you. So um, Kate will be back with Kezia just in, in a few moments. So we're going to wrap wrap up the session. Thanks again, Tara. Thank and you. We'll hopefully see you in a group. And um, yeah, we'll see you soon, ladies. Uh, just stay on this um, stream and we'll be back with our next session. Thank you.